Imagine a weight loss drug that doesn't require injections, works powerfully over time and could be accessible to millions more people. Meet Orphogliprone, the newest GLP-1 agonist making waves in the treatment of obesity. It's not available yet, but has shown positive results in a phase three clinical trial and could be approved for treating obesity next year. If you've seen my last video on injectable GLP-1 drugs like Wigovi and Mount Jaro, this one's the next chapter. Orphogliprin was discovered by Shugai Pharmaceutical, then licensed to Eli Lilly in 2018 for development. On the left, we see Orphogliprin, a non-peptide small molecule weighing in at around 883 grams per mole. What makes it exciting is that it's orally active with a bioavailability of nearly 79%. In practice, that means it can be taken as a simple once daily pill, nothing more complicated than swallowing a tablet. Now contrast that with the weight loss drugs on the right, liraglutide, semaglutide and dulaglutide. These are large peptide based drugs each over 3,000 grams per mole. Their size and structure make them unstable in the digestive tract and not absorbed effectively into the bloodstream, even when formulated with an absorption enhancer. As a result, they are best delivered by subcutaneous injection. Despite these differences in size, formulation and delivery, the mechanism is essentially the same. GLP-1 receptor activation. Whether swallowed or injected, all of these drugs mimic endogenous GLP-1. The biology is shared, but the patient experience is very different. So what is GLP-1 and how does it influence weight control? GLP-1 stands for glucagon-like peptide 1. It's an incretin hormone, which means it is secreted in response to food ingestion and acts to lower blood glucose. It is released from L cells in the distal ileum and colon, travels through the bloodstream and acts on GLP-1 receptors in various tissues, including the brain, pancreas and stomach. Let's start with the pancreas. GLP-1 stimulates insulin secretion after meals and inhibits glucagon release. It also supports beta cell survival by stimulating proliferation and reducing cell death. Together, these actions help maintain blood glucose. Synthetic GLP-1 agonists mimic these effects, improving glucose control in type 2 diabetes. GLP-1 also plays a key role in appetite and weight control. Receptors in the brain regulate satiety and reward. When activated, they reduce neural responses to food cues, lowering the desire to eat and reducing overall food intake. In the stomach and gastrointestinal tract, GLP-1 slows gastric emptying, prolonging the feeling of fullness. These combined effects in the brain and gut help regulate appetite and support weight management. GLP-1 binds to its receptor on the cell membrane, a G protein coupled receptor. This receptor spans the membrane and on the cytoplasmic side, interacts with a GTP binding protein made up of an alpha subunit and a beta gamma complex. In its resting state, the G protein binds GDP or guanine diphosphate. When GLP-1 binds to the extracellular side of the receptor, the receptor changes shape, allowing GDP to be replaced with GTP. This exchange causes the alpha subunit to dissociate from beta gamma 
and interact with other proteins in the cell. The GLP-1 receptor couples specifically to the GS isoform of the alpha subunit, which stimulates the enzyme adenyl cyclase. Adenyl cyclase converts ATP into cyclic AMP, a key messenger that triggers downstream signalling cascades. Once activated, the receptor becomes a target for G-protein coupled receptor kinases, shown here as GRK. They phosphorylate the receptor, allowing beta-arrestin to bind, leading to receptor internalization and desensitization. Importantly, beta-arrestin also initiates signaling pathways that are independent of the G-protein. Together, these signalling mechanisms drive the physiological effects of GLP-1 and GLP-1 analogues, such as semaglutide, which bind to the same receptor site. Orphogliprin works a little differently. It activates the GLP-1 receptor by binding to an allosteric site, a region distinct from where GLP-1 itself binds involving parts of the transmembrane helices. Binding at this site causes a conformational change in the receptor that selectively triggers the G-protein dependent signalling pathways, while having little or no effect on the G-protein independent beta-arrestin mediated pathways. In this way, orphogliprone is a biased agonist at GLP-1 receptors stimulating the G-protein without activating G-protein independent signalling. This biased action of orphogliprone distinguishes it from the peptide agonists like semaglutide, which activate both G-protein dependent and beta-arrestin mediated pathways. Let's see how that might affect efficacy and side effects. G-protein-dependent signalling drives insulin secretion and appetite suppression, the key therapeutic effects. In contrast, beta-arrestin-mediated signalling is thought to contribute to receptor internalisation and some gastrointestinal side effects. These are unwanted effects of receptor activation. So, by favouring G-protein activation, or for glipron, may maintain the glucose-lowering and weight-reducing benefits of GLP-1 agonists, while potentially reducing unwanted effects such as nausea and vomiting. This is potentially an additional advantage over peptide-based GLP-1 receptor agonists like semaglutide. Now let's see how orphogliprone performs in patients. This histogram shows the results of a recent meta-analysis of different studies involving patients with diabetes and obesity who received oral orphogliprone daily for 26 weeks. You can see a clear dose-dependent reduction in body weight, with higher doses producing greater mean weight loss. The results of the first large Phase 3 trial were published last month in the New England Journal of Medicine. In this study, patients with obesity but without diabetes were followed for a longer period. The findings not only confirm those from earlier results, but also demonstrate more pronounced and consistent effects across a larger patient population. Overall, these data highlight orphogliprone's robust efficacy in promoting weight reduction, reinforcing its potential as a once daily oral GLP-1 receptor agonist with clinically meaningful outcomes. But how effective is orphogliprone compared to existing drugs? We won't know the full picture until direct comparisons are published in peer-reviewed journals. However, a couple of weeks ago, Eli Lilly reported initial evidence that orphogliprone is superior to oral semaglutide 
in both glucose and weight control. This announcement followed the conclusion of Achieve 3, their phase 3 trial comparing the safety and efficacy of orphoglipron with oral semaglutide which is formulated with an absorption enhancer to improve bioavailability. The data are shown here as histograms. Two doses of orphogliprone in purple are compared with two doses of semaglutide in blue. These doses were chosen based on earlier studies as optimal for blood glucose control. The histogram on the left shows a more pronounced effect of orphoglipron on plasma HbA1c, glycated haemoglobin, which is a key marker of long-term blood glucose control. The magnitude of this effect compares favourably with the standard diabetes drug metformin. The histogram on the right shows greater weight loss at both doses of orphoglipron compared with semaglutide. Lilly plans to publish the detailed Achieve 3 results in a peer-reviewed journal, so we can look forward to seeing the full data soon. In the longer term, an important question will be how orphoglipron compares with injected GLP-1 agonists and the dual GLP-1 GIP agonist, terzepatide. What about side effects? Well, we don't fully know yet. The possibility that biased agonism might reduce adverse effects has not been clearly demonstrated so far. As with other GLP-1 receptor agonists, orphogliprone is associated primarily with gastrointestinal related side effects. This table summarises the reported GI effects across different GLP-1 agonists. Overall, the incidence of these side effects appears broadly comparable across drugs, although orphogliprone, like terzepatide, may be associated with somewhat milder severity in some studies. That said, in the ACHIEVE-3 trial, directly comparing orphogliprone with oral semaglutide, treatment discontinuation occurred in 9.7% of patients receiving the highest dose of orphogliprón, compared with 4.9% at the highest dose of semaglutide. So, overall, the side effect profile of orphogliprón looks broadly similar to other GLP-1 receptor agonists, mainly gastrointestinal effects that are usually mild to moderate, but not trivial for some patients. The early data give us a useful first impression, but as with any new drug, it's really just the beginning. As promising as orphogliprón is, there's still much we need to learn. While early data show strong efficacy and a favourable safety profile, the ACHIEVE-3 trial data still needs to be peer-reviewed and direct comparisons will be needed with injected GLP-1 agonists. We don't yet know how it performs over the long term, especially in areas like cardiovascular protection and kidney health. One particularly important question is whether careful dose escalation could help mitigate the common GI side effects seen with GLP-1 therapies. If so, this could make orphogliprone even more tolerable and accessible. Ultimately, Ongoing studies and real-world data will be key to understanding where orphogliprón fits in the broader landscape of obesity and diabetes care across diverse populations. <laughs>